This is the tutorial series, or this is the first part of the tutorial series on jar kai spinning. Uh, jar kai is just a fancy way to say dual wield or two sabers. Uh, it's some of the flashier stuff that's out there, uh, but I wanted to take this opportunity before I started that tutorial proper to go over some of the fundamental thing or fundamental base uh, concepts that you're going to need to have in order to get this down. Uh, first thing I want to talk about, actually, is the sabers themselves. Uh, now, Jarkai spinning looks great with full-sized, big, flashy sabers. However, uh, the longer the blade on your saber, the more it's going to slow down your spins. Uh, what I recommend for Jarkai is that you use a smaller model. It allows you to get away with tricks that you're unable to get away with with the bigger models. It uh, also allows you to move a whole lot faster than some of the big models with the drag on the, uh, on the larger blade. Uh, I'm using, or I usually use, initiate, or initiate blades and initiate hilts. They're a relatively small hilt. The blade is only 24 inches long. Uh, and Individually, they don't look very intimidating, but together they put on a pretty good show. Uh, I know a lot of other people use 32-inch blades for Jarkai spinning. 32 is fine, but if you start going with the full 36, you're asking for trouble. Work your way to something like that. Don't start with it. Uh, the thing about it is that uh, spinning two sabers is relatively easy. Spinning two sabers without having the sabers hit each other or you is a little bit trickier. So Jarkai spinning is a lot about timing. Um, so uh, that said, a few things that you can look forward to in this. Uh, get yourself, like I said, I'm, I'm using an initiate with a heavy grade blade. It puts the point of balance just above the emitter right here. Uh, that's about where I want it because that way one-handed flips become uh, a lot more possible. I want the rotation to be somewhere in here. Um, but that's, that's my preference. In these tutorials, you'll find that, uh, well, first off, if you're going to be trying something with two hands, you need to know it very well one-handed with both hands. People have asked me a few times about how do I strengthen my offhand. There isn't any convenient trick to do it. Um, you just have to use it. Okay, force yourself to use your left hand. Learn a move with your right hand in single saber. Here, I'm put one of these down. Learn a move with your right hand in single saber, like the standard obi -Ani. And then force yourself to be able to do the same thing with your left hand. It's going to take more work, usually about three times as much. I'm using right and left, by the way, because I'm right-handed. Uh, right but it's going to take about three times as much work to get something on your off hand as it does on your dominant hand. You just have to keep at it. So, know the moves with one hand before you even attempt them with two. Also, Jarkai spinning is going to require a lot of patience. Okay, know that something can be done and then go try to do it, and you're going to find that it's going to seem almost impossible. The thing about Jarkai spinning is it's a lot of muscle memory, it's a lot of programming coordination in when, uh, when you may not think that you have enough to do it. Uh, you got to keep trying and keep trying and keep trying with most of these moves, and it will feel awkward and impossible, and then at some point, it will just click in. It's, uh, I can't describe it until it happens to you, but it'll just click in, and you'll be able to do it from then on. It's with a little bit of practice, as long as you keep on top of it, it'll, you'll be amazed that you weren't able to do it in the first place. Okay, the uh, first of those moves that I found when I was dealing with this was just the, uh, just the double OB ante spin. And these days, it's hard to believe I can just pick up a saber and do this. It's hard to believe that I had any trouble doing this at all to begin with. But it took a long time. Uh, it took a lot of swinging my arms around like an orangutan before I was able to figure out the coordination behind this. The same thing's going to be true of all of the, uh, or pretty much all of the moves with double saber. It's muscle memory. Uh, know the moves well enough. And what you're going to find that you're doing while you learn these is uh, usually one hand is going to be able to go on autopilot without thinking about it. And you'll direct your focus to the other hand. If I pay attention to my left hand, if it was having trouble with this, I could adjust my left hand while my right hand just does what it's going to do. I can trust it. All right, so know the moves well enough that you can do a move at least with your dominant autopilot, because then you can pay attention to your left and get them to work together. 
A couple other tips on these spins as they're coming up. Uh, the best way to practice them is in front of a mirror or uh, some kind of biofeedback uh, device like an iPad that's filming you. Uh, like I can see myself right there, right now. Yeah, but be able to see yourself while you're doing these things. Because a lot of it is, uh, a lot of it's going to be visual. You'll be able to feel what you're doing with your muscles, and you'll be able to watch and see what you're doing on the screen or in the mirror. Okay, pay attention to various parts of your body. Allow one part of, or allow the, uh, allow, <clears throat> allow at least the dominant hand to go on autopilot, but watch what your shoulders do. Watch what your hands do. Okay, uh, a lot of this timing is going to come to the shoulders. You see my shoulders are fairly even right now. Forward, forward. Okay, you want things to be symmetrical, usually, until you get good enough to be able to make them not. But, uh, but keep an eye on your shoulders, keep an eye on your hands, keep an eye on the blades. Uh, and adjust as you're working, as you can see yourself in the mirror. Adjust what you're doing. Alright, uh, so that said, uh, a lot of it, like I said, is going to be tricky. Uh, we're going to take it in this series starting with some basic moves and then working our way up and eventually we'll get ourselves into freestyle. We're going to start off though next time with a discussion on just directionality and the base pattern because in, uh, in these routines you got to have a comfortable place to, uh, to go to whether it's one of these or whether it's one of these. Okay, but that's next time. Uh, until then, practice with the single saber. Get good with both hands. Get yourself some shorter blades. Uh, and a place to practice over some soft grass, because you're going to drop a few things, especially if you try to get into the aerials. You're going to hit yourself in the back of the legs a few times when you start this out. But once, you, uh, once it clicks in, like I said, you'll be amazed that you couldn't always do it. Alright, uh, until then, uh, we'll see you on the forums.